On today's episode of Path Monk Presents, I've got a very special guest with me joining today. Please welcome Jonathan, who is the demand uh, generator at Regrowth. He's your go-to for climate tech, climate change, and demand generation, and regeneration agriculture. So for all of you who don't know, Regrow is transforming our agricultural system and the single most important thing in how they combat climate change. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining me today. It's an honor to have you on our show. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, we're lucky to have you here. So for all our listeners out there, tell us what does uh, Regrow do overall? Yeah, for sure. So Regrow is a really cool organization. What we do is essentially help companies build resilience into their supply chain, into their agricultural supply chain, as well as reduce the carbon footprint of that supply chain. So imagine any sort of company that relies on an agricultural product, um, whether it be a consumer packaged good, so everything from you know, potato chips to a retailer um, who is producing something like t-shirts and needs cotton. So all of those agricultural processes are very carbon intensive and um, we need to reduce our carbon footprint in order to combat climate change. So Regrow basically provides software that has a combination of the science and data for companies to baseline what their agricultural uh, carbon emissions are right now, um, prioritize what sort of interventions they can take, and then also measure any interventions, report on them, and verify that the interventions that they've taken are actually um, doing what they were supposed to. So over the long term, are they reducing their climate footprint? Um, so there's a lot that goes into that, but um, yeah, at a high level, it's basically helping companies lower their footprint and also become like more resilient and resistant to climate shocks. That's incredible. Wow, you guys are a major key player in this industry. So that's awesome to hear. Now, speaking of your clients, how, how many, you know, um, industries do you cater to overall? Do you have a specific mm -hmm. industry that you mainly put more of your focus on or mm -hmm. do you cater to all sorts of industries? Sure. So I think it helps to think of like some of who our biggest and most well-known clients are to get an idea. So within the consumer packaged goods space, we work with General Mills and Kellogg. So you can imagine all the products that they bring to market and you know how many agricultural outputs they need for those. So um, really focused on those kind of consumer packaged goods very heavily. Um, also agribusiness. So companies like uh, Cargill, um, are very important to us and then also retailers. So really anyone who needs some sort of agricultural product to produce their end good um, in some way could work with Regrow. We have um, global scale. So we're monitoring fields in 40 different countries, I think, maybe, maybe more than 40 now and uh, millions and millions, I think it's 1.2 billion uh, acres. Um, of, of the land that we're monitoring. So um, big global CPGs, retailers, and agribusiness. That's incredible. So as for your clients, how do they typically find you? Do you know, what is your top client acquisition channel? Is it through word of mouth, referrals, digital marketing, or, you know, is it a mix yeah. of things? Yeah. So up until this point, the team has done a really amazing job with some like founder led sales and some very like personal connections. We've got a ton of really, really deep expertise within agriculture, within our company. I think we have like 15 or 20 PhDs and people who've been in the industry for a really long time. So they did a great job kind of leveraging their connections to get started. Um, we also have done a really great job with our PR. So um, our CEO, Anastasia, is um, very front and center on a lot of different climate topics. And um, we've really gotten the regrow name out there that way. Um, gotten some good press coverage, like with Fast Company and some other big publications. Um, so that's what like kind of has brought us to this point. And now what we're really looking to do is add in some more like programmatic, some more digital type channels. Um, so that's a, like a bit more scalable over time. Um, and building some like predictability into our revenue pipe, uh, programs pipeline generation. So we're really just kind of dipping our toes in now into um, some of the more like uh, popular demand gen channels, whether it be LinkedIn or looking at, you know, ABM platforms, uh, a little bit on search. Um, so that's really like the next phase for us. That's incredible. You guys have a lot of exciting things coming down your pipeline for where you want to do. That's awesome. For sure. Yeah. Now. We're going to talk about the website. So what would you say are the major strengths of 
the regrow website, but also where are there areas of opportunities for improvement? Yeah, for sure. So I think one thing that I love about our website is just it's very simple to navigate. Um, we haven't overburdened it. There hasn't been the problems with like website by committee that you often see with a, with a menu that has 30 different columns and a million different links. So I like that we keep it simple um, and try to be really clear about who we um, can solve for and what kind of problems we solve. Um, one thing I think we could improve on and we're looking to do is just to make it just to elevate it from like a design perspective a little bit to add a bit more um, like motion into it um, to make it a little more sleek for lack of a better word um, so that it's not quite as uh, flat as it is now. So it can sometimes read like you're looking at a really nicely designed PDF, whereas we want it to be more of like a web experience that people feel like they can interact with. So um, that'll be a, a focus for us moving forward, as well as trying to deliver some more like personalized experiences um, based on whatever data we have around a visitor. Awesome. That's really good. I'm excited for you guys. What you're going to be, what you're going to be doing in the future and the plans that you've got. So now we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk about you as a leader. So what does an average day look like for you? Are you guys still in the office? Is it hybrid? Are you fully remote? You know, who is your team and you know, who do you report to and what do you do? Yeah, for sure. So we've got a pretty small team within within marketing. Um, so there's five of us, but then I really look at myself as being a part of just the revenue team in general. Um, we are fully remote. So um, technically Regrow's office is in Durham, New Hampshire, but I think there's one person there. So um, it'll be great to join everyone. We have an offsite in a couple of weeks. So um, fully remote, I'm working from home. I have been for six years now, actually. So, so before it was cool with COVID. Um, and yeah, so an average day for me, there really is a lot of foundation building to be doing at this point. So during my first uh, month, month and a half, I've really focused on uh, building out our CRM so that we can report on any programs that we do get in market and understand what's working and what's not, making sure that um, everything is smooth from a like inbound lead perspective. It's getting routed to the right people. They're being notified. Um, we have quick follow-up. So trying to not let there be any kind of leaks in that bucket for things that are coming inbound. And then also trying to put together, you know, the with the rest of the team, a strategic narrative around how we want to go to market for the rest of the year, um, building out the campaigns that we want to get into market uh, for, for the remainder of the year and basically just um, building out our kind of revenue generating strategy. So it's been um, been really fun um, to be in at a company where there's you know clear product market fit, um, but there is so much room for growth and um, like so many so many foundations to be built and there's not a ton of bad habits to unlearn, which I think is is always a plus. Yeah, that is a plus. And I could tell you do you do a lot. You cross function with a lot of teams, and you have a lot of project management, and you're collaborating with you know people from all different you know ends of the uh, company. So I think it's great for with what you're doing in your company. That's awesome. For sure, and I think you know that's what I was really looking for is something where I could you know touch all the different parts of the business. That's part of why I enjoy being in house. Um, I do you know I did the agency thing for about a year, year and a half, and I really enjoyed the different kind of exposure you get to various business models, but um, there is kind of no substitute for that, like really direct collaboration with anyone from, you know, sales to CS to product across the whole business. And um, something that I've appreciated about Regrow so far is that sort of flat hierarchy and feeling like you can kind of reach out to anyone in any department and, and get some time on their calendar. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that with us. So now we're coming to the end of our interview and I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Cool. Yes, let's do it. Awesome. So I can tell that you're very passionate about climate tech overall and what it does. So in your own opinion, why do you think right now is a great time to get into climate tech overall? Yeah, there's there's a lot of different reasons that I think people should be looking for a career in climate. Um, it's a little bit potentially intimidating to make that switch. Um, if you feel like, oh, I don't know anything about science, or maybe I have to have a background in climate to move over. but um, there's so many people needed in climate tech and in sustainability um, and don't put those like artificial barriers on yourself. So I think, yeah, beyond just like 
you know, working for a company where you can believe in the mission and feel like you're making a difference. There's also some kind of like selfish reasons to do it. One is that there's a lot of money going into climate tech and um, hopefully there will be even more over time, um, really you know, kind of an industry of the future. So getting in on the ground floor there. Um, another thing is that a lot of climate tech companies have really formed in the past couple of years where like AI has been, you know, obviously skyrocketing. It's it's impossible to avoid, you know, every company that you talk to, even if they're 20 years old, 50 years old, they're trying to work AI into their product somehow. A lot of climate tech companies were born during the last few years and they have AI as like a core foundational part of their business. So they really understand it um, and are pretty advanced in it. Um, and then also it's just a cool community to be a part of. It's very collaborative. Um, there's not, there's of course competition between different companies selling similar solutions. Um, kind of at the, at the end of the day, there is that like one uniting goal of, you know, trying to reduce emissions or trying to make, um, you know, our energy grid more efficient, whatever kind of subsector of climate you get into. Um, there's a lot of cross like collaborative, um, competitive collaboration. So um, it's just kind of a nice space to be in. Yeah, it is. And really empowering. And at the end of the day, everyone's on the same goal to create a more sure. greener world for us. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, Absolutely. Now, if there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you would want to have fixed in your role as a marketer today? Wow, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I think let, let me take let me take a second to really think about that. Um, I would love for a lot of the um, like workflows that you have to build within a CRM and a lot of the kind of like custom configuration that you have to do. I think there's really a role for AI to be able to do some of that for you. So I'm sure that companies like HubSpot and Salesforce are like deeply investing in this, but being able to give like a CRM system, a directive, um, just in like plain language and then have it like build a workflow for you or build processes for you. Um, I think is kind of like where that uh, industry is headed. And I do spend like so much of my time in CRM doing CRM analysis and setup that um, I think having more like automation there could free people up to do more of like the advanced analysis and spend less time on like data cleaning and setup and those sort of things. So in terms of my day to day, that would be super helpful. Um, and also I think help people align on um, like metrics that really matter and not get so bogged down on like attributing single opportunities to to one source or another. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing where, you know, within like the tech space in general overall, a lot of people have been talking about, you know, a CRM system where I could do, you know, everything for me where I don't have to go in and, you know, do the data cleaning to where I can be able to optimize my time overall. So mm -hmm. hopefully AI will, you know, get to this soon. Soon, please. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. So we're coming to the end of our interview, and I want to thank you so much for joining us on PathMonk Presents, but I also want to give you the last word. If someone were to forget about everything we've talked about in your interview today, what is the one thing you want them to remember about regrow overall? Yeah, um, I would like them to remember that regrow is just one of thousands of new companies that are popping up in this space that are at the point where they need a lot of marketing help. Um, they have you know, established some product market fit or are headed to a place where they have product market fit, but they need people who have done the like B2B business before they've done SaaS before um, because a lot of climate tech companies come from like a very science heavy background. So maybe they don't have that business background. So the one thing that I remember is that regardless of your uh, background and your familiarity with green tech or climate, there's still a place for you in this. And um, don't let it hold you back from, you know, applying to a company that interests you. Awesome. You summed it up perfectly. And for any marketers out there, any interest in the climate tech, you know where to find them at a regrow. Jonathan, awesome. thank you so much again. For all of our listeners out there, check us out next week on PathMonk.